Hello friends, welcome. Friends, in this video, I am going to talk about this draft bill posted on the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting website on 10th of November 2023. This bill call is called Broadcasting Services Regulation Bill of 2023 and it is intending to regulate the broadcast sector and will be replacing the Cable Television Network Regulation Act of 1995. The friends, this bill is currently under the draft process and it is uh, the, the ministry is requesting for response and we have to submit the response by 9th December 2023. Now, in this video, I am not intent, intending to do a deep dive on this bill, on each and every aspect of this bill. I am going to limit this video only to the, ex, to the extent of tariff regulation. Now, friends, you know that tariff for the broadcast sector is regulated by TRAI. And the power that the TRAI draws in order to regulate the broadcast sector emanates from two things. One is the broadcast bill, which is the Cable uh, Television Regulation Act and the TRAI Act. And let me explain how. See, the definition of what service will be called as a broadcast services is defined by the Ministry of Information Broadcasting. That is point number one. The second is an article which I wrote on 11th of uh, November 2023, which, ha which has this provision embedded in this article, which says that the TRAI's, uh, uh, the Telecom India Authority Amendment Act of 2000 has a relevant section, which is reproduced below. The section two of the, of the principal act, clause D, uh, sec uh, D in clause K, the following provision shall be inserted, namely, provided that the central government may notify other services to be telecom, telecommunication services, including broadcast services. It means that first, the broadcast services has to be defined under the broadcast bill and the TRAI has the power to regulate all services falling under the broadcast services umbrella because they, those are being tagged as telecommunication services. And this is how the TRA is able to draw the powers to regulate broadcast services. Now, in this bill, various kinds of services are being called as broadcast services. Now, you see earlier, OTT was not being considered as broadcast service. Now, since the definition of broadcast services is now getting changed and to include OTT, therefore, now the TRA will have the powers to regulate the OTT sector's tariffs as well. Now, there is one more thing. In this particular article, if you go through, you will find that it is not just about the OTT. It is video on demand also. So those are also being categorized as broadcast, broadcast services. So now the TRI is not only going to regulate OTT, but also will be have the power to regulate tariff for, the, for those services which are video on demand. For example, Amazon TV, Netflix, all are video on demand. Those are not conventional broadcast services. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about that how the existing regulations of TRI either will be required to be revamped or has to be completely dismantled in order to regulate all such services which are going to fall under the purview of broadcast. That's the whole purpose of the video. Now, in order for me to go forward, it is important for me, uh, for, for us all to understand how the broadcast services differ from each other. So if you look at this particular chart, you will find that there are actually three different segments here. One here, another below, and then third. So all these three segments are categorized differently. The first segment is called the conventional broadcast channel, which has DTH, cable, and hits included. Second is free dish, where no regulation is currently under place by TRI. TRI is not regulating free dish, tariff regulation. And the third is internet-based broadcasting. Now friends, let's understand how, what is the business model and the technology which is in place, means what technical um, methods are in place in order to deliver services using conventional broadcast channel and how the market structure is getting decided and what are the points of market failure. Because the whole purpose of TRAI to regulate broad, the tariffs of, for broadcast services is to prevent market failure, right? That is the reason why it is regulating and let's understand what are the points of market failure. The points of market failure in this particular situation will be the size of this pipe. 
because if the size of the pipe is going to be limited and if the number of channels are going to be large then this pipe may not be able to carry so many channels right so therefore there has to be some rules in place in order to decide who has to basically be given uh, you know opportunity to to transmit its channels who has to be placed where because there could be some issues from the point of view of interference you know you and we can place the channel in the first and then there has to be there could be some issues from the point of view of the user's ability to browse through these channels so all those situations leads to market failure and they, it can unfairly promote or discourage a particular channel because if suppose a channel is being placed in first in the slot as soon as you open your remote you get the channel first the likelihood of you watching the channel will be much much more um, the compared to a channel which is placed last in the in the selection window similarly if the pipe capacity is less then th there could be market failure from the point of view of the the me the the person who is carrying or the company who is trying to carry those channels they will have leverage to decide you know who to carry who not to carry and the the most important thing here is that the broadcasters has the capability to bundle these channels in in compartments in 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 different types of uh, sets so you can basically uh, choose a particular channel which is very very popular and then on on uh, you using that as an anchor you bundle some non popular channels into that and that kind of creates a market failure so tri is trying to regulate and try to prevent that such bundling does not take place using their 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 nto tariff order that's the whole purpose of tri coming out with the tariff order was to prevent such bundling now friends in this particular media which is internet based broadcasting how these situations change let's understand this here everything is being carried simultaneously but here the channel whatever channel that you have which is the internet pipe is carrying only one particular broadcast channel at a time so this pipe is not carrying all just like in this case all channels are carrying simultaneously here it is only carrying one at a time how because the user has got power to call for that channel by sending a message to the the uh the the uh, cloud service and say that look i want this particular channel please send me that channel so there is no point in sending all the channels simultaneously less like here here everything is here you can just uh, you know ask for a particular channel then since the video on demand is also be getting part of this you can ask for a particular channel or a portion of that particular program recorded somewhere and placed in the cloud and without asking for that channel you can basically ask for that uh, that program so the 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 concept of channel here in the internet based um, broadcasting uh, service falls apart it is no longer so both the market failure actually there are three market failures which we talked about one is that the limited capacity of the of the pipe second is that the viewers ability to browse a particular channel and the third is that the operators in you know motivation to bundle multiple channels with a popular channel all these things fail you know no longer applicable here the pipe is is infinite because you can carry infinite number of channels right the second is that you do not have the problem of browsing the channel using a remote you can basically go and search for a channel and therefore there is no problem for that and the third important thing is the concept of channel itself basically falls apart because now the channel is further dissected into programs and those programs are available on the cloud for you to call so therefore whatever you are trying to regulate here to prevent market failure is no longer applicable here so therefore <laughs> so that is why i basically believe is that when you have a suite of services the broadcast services which is currently being regulated under nto nto3 even the ip tv also getting regulated under ntd mind you right how can you basically have the same framework to regulate ott and on top of it the ott is an unmanaged broadcast service which is running on best effort on this pipe the ip tv can be managed right you can manage the ip tv services and you can basically compete with the quality of this channel or the hd channel or hd channel but ott doesn't have any kind of quality assurance because it is running on best effort so then in that case 
you have to come out with a, either a different framework of regulation for OTT or you have to unwind the complete framework of the existing regulation so that the OTT can be managed. So in my view, the existing attempt by the Ministry of Broadcasting to bring OTT under the framework of, broad, of, of, of regulation is going to create some kind of spillover impact which will either unwind the complete regulation and if you don't want to unwind, then you have to come out with a complete different framework for OTT. Right? There is one more issue here, which I like to tell you. You might have heard about FWPs on 5G network. Now, FWPs is nothing but transmitting high speed 5G um, uh, um, uh, capability inside the home using an external antenna located in the, in the house of, uh, of an individual. So those pipes are very, very fat pipe. Means basically you can say that it's almost replicating the capability of the OFC over the wireless network. And I don't want to get into the details of FWP, otherwise the video will get lost. What I but what I want to emphasize here is that in a OT, in a FWP, you may have the capability to regulate the quality of the the channel, the either the video on demand or the uh, the IPTV. You can do that. So what I'm basically trying to say is that there are various means, technology capabilities which are possible which the operators may follow without the regulator knowing that they are doing so. Right? And in a situation like that, when all these channels are available in a particular way to the, to the uh, consumer, then there is no reason why the these consumers are going to subscribe to the channels which are offered through the conventional media. So I think the, the regulation in place for broadcasting, uh, the current regulation in place to broadcast to encompass each and every aspect of ser broadcast services under the current framework in the, into the proposed framework of regulation might require try to look into their existing regulations and either completely unwind them or try to come out with a new set of regulation for OTT, which is going to basically become an overstretch because it's going to kill the industry because the OTT is quite different, you know, either you, because there could be various kinds of OTT services as, since the broadcasting has become quite encompassing and it is it is it is dissecting the channels uh, or the channels in program so the granularity of of a channel no longer exists so how do you regulate a situation like that so i i don't know you know i i was always opposed to try doing tariff regulation and broadcasting and and although or, or, and the operators have already been complaining about linear channels flowing over ott and trying to dismantle the business of dth and cable and uh, other uh, conventional broadcasting media and in my view this is going to get accelerated further yeah with the advent of 5g because of the reason i explained to you because FW, fwa can give them quality services because the channel is very 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 the bandwidth uh, that will be possible to drive through fwp is going to be very fat and very pipe and where you drive ott or any kind of broadcast channel that to only one not multiple of them even if it is being run on best effort it will match up with the quality of the conventional broadcast channels. So I don't think that the current regulation will survive. It has to be unwinded or there has to be some different framework which we have to think through. So I thought, I thought that I'd like to bring this before the uh, viewers notice so that they understand the, the broadcast regulations implications are going to be huge on the broadcasting sectors at large and the existing regulations no longer will work in the manner which they have been placed to regulate the sector. So the best would be to not to regulate the sector. There should not be any AGR license fees and everything because otherwise it will create a non-level playing field between the players trying to offer and people will all migrate from those restrictive um, highly regulated sectors towards sectors which are going to be non-regulated anyway the whole thing will get dismantled automatically. right? So thank you for your time and uh, I hope that you, you have understood and anyway this is going to be a long process of public consultation and we'll get a lot of time opportunity to provide our comments and um, hopefully there's something um, robust and in the interest of the industry will come out. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.
Thanks a lot.